But anyway, my name is Chelsea Smith, and I'm a program manager out of the Dayton Central Region of Girl Scouts of Western Ohio. And today we will be working on our ambassador water badge. Watch. Um, and that is to find out more about water and reflect on the role that water plays in our life and our world. There are, of course, five steps. The first one we'll be talking about in just a minute is have fun reflecting on your relationship with water. Step two is to celebrate water art and then create your own. Step three is to find out about water issues. Step four is to explore water solutions. And then step five is... So let's get started by talking about step number one, which is half fun reflecting on your relationship with water. And for that, all you really need to do is to talk to somebody else about your relationship with water. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about myself and how I grew up with water. And of course, it's going to be more than me just like, you know, I use water every day because I wash my hands and I drink it. Um, it's going to be my personal way to do that. So, I grew up near Toledo, and only a couple miles away from Lake Erie. And if you didn't know, Lake Erie is one of our great lakes. Um, and every time I go to my grandparents' house, they lived a bit closer than we did to the lake. But every time we would go there, we would walk to the lake from my grandparents' house, and we would collect uh, shells. I didn't want to call them seashells because it's a it's a freshwater lake but um, shells in general and then different rocks. There were a lot of really flat rocks up there and I would definitely try to skip them, but I wasn't very good at it, but that didn't mean I didn't want to try anyway. Um, I've also gone out on that lake a few times on a boat. Um, I think one time was just to hang out with um, some family friends and then a couple other times I did try to go fishing. Um, my dad would take us out on his boat to try to go fishing, and I never caught anything because I was way too impatient, but um, the that lake has a lot of walleye and a lot of perch, which is a lot of good eating up there. Um, I had a lot of perch fries growing up, so that was always really fun. And then, of course, I have been on a jet ski in the lake, and I've gone kayaking up on the lake. Um, and a couple of times when I was really young, I did uh, swim in Lake Erie, but Eventually, we got a pool, and we stopped doing that. So I did spend a lot of time in the pool, too, as a kid. Um, another way that I spent time near water was my neighbor had a pond. Um, a big old pond. He was a farmer, so is you know, back way back on his property. But he let us go back there and go fishing, too, and that pond was full of bass and bluegill. And every time we'd go, we'd take our swimsuits, and we'd start off by either fishing around the edges of the pond or we would wade halfway in the pond and go fishing um but every time we went we always ended up swimming in the pond no matter what so that was always a really great time and a fun memory for me and again if you have any memories about times when you interacted with water please put them in the comments because i would love to see them um let's see i grew up really, really close to a couple of ditches or creeks or whatever you want to call them. Just like, you know, little runoff places for water to go. And you would always find me down there growing up. Um, I would always go down there to catch frogs or crayfish or um, a couple of times I ran into some, some snakes that kind of freaked me out a little bit, but I'd always end up down there anyway, and actually, my brothers who were younger than me, once they got around the same age I was at that time, they ended up um, hanging out down there too and doing the same thing. So it was kind of a, a cool family tradition, almost. My older sister didn't do it as much, though. Um, I also had a marsh near my house growing up. Um, and that marsh not only was a place that me and my family would go kayaking, but it was also a place where you could go bird watching. Um, around, actually, around this time, maybe closer to early May, um, is a big birding week up there where all, a lot of birds use that as a layover spot. Um, but a lot of times when we were out there, you'd see things like ducks and geese and a lot of swans because that area was really big on trying to up the trumpeter swan population again. Um, and then, of course, I grew up or was always near a lot of rivers. So I grew up near the Maumee River. Um, I, anytime I would go to the zoo or the art museum or even when I started off 
for college. I would always cross the, uh, the Maumee River. I also grew up really close to the Portage River, which another place that we would go kayaking. Um, and then as I moved around, as I got older, I spent some time near the Hocking River, some time by the Little Miami and the Ohio River, and now I live really, really close to the Stillwater River, which when you watch the video for Step 5, you'll get to see a little bit of. But I could go on and on and on and on about my relationship with water, but we are really interested to know about your relationship with water. So even if you don't comment on this video, make sure you tell somebody, tell your parents or whoever you live with about your relationship with water just to complete that step. You can also, you know, make a post on any of your social media platforms that you're using or, um, you know, write it down and tell somebody about it. Share it with somebody. You don't have to read it out loud, but write it down and give that, um, you know, your little story about your, your relationship with water to, a um, anyway, that was my personal relationship with water. I hope it wasn't too boring. And, um, now I'm just going to kind of go over other ways that you can complete that step. Um, <clears throat> so other ways you can complete step one is by visiting water in its natural state. I did go and do that when I made my video for step five. Um, but maybe you are also close to a body of water and you want to, you want to do that too. Um, another thing you can do is try a new water skill. I know I talked a lot about, um, kayaking and that's something that I've done a lot and I'm really interested in, but I've never tried paddle boarding before. So maybe something that I would do is I would go try paddle boarding. Although I'm probably going to fall right off. Cause like I've said before in a couple of my videos, I'm a little clumsy. Um, but always try new things. It's a great place to fail. Um, and then the other thing you can do is just try enjoying a water activity that you already know how to do. So maybe, you know, you, you're a swimmer, go swimming. Right now the indoor pools are probably not open, um, but once it gets a little bit warmer and depending on where you're viewing this from, um, you m might have nice weather to go swimming, go swimming, you know, uh, if you have a pool to complete step one. Step two is to celebrate water art and create your own. Some of the ways you can do that is you can, it was recommended that you can read a 200 page story about water, which if you're all about reading and that's your thing, you do that, that's cool. Um, or you could read five poems about water. And that's something I'd be into because I'm more into poetry. I guess if the story was like less textbooky, I'd probably read it. Um, but whatever you're into, there's a couple other steps for that, too. Um, you can enjoy an exhibit or event that features water. There might be some festivals that celebrate water, and though they might not be going on right now, you can definitely do the research into them. Or you can look online. The Internet has everything. Um, and you can look for a piece of art that has um, water as its feature, like Monet's Water Lilies. That's a really cool painting. Um, or you can create your own water composition. That could be your um, some art made with like watercolor or something, or something that is just inspired by water. So maybe the colors are all blues and stuff like that. That'd be really cool to do. Step three is to find out about water issues. Um, it's recommended to visit a water facility and explore its effectiveness. Um, you might not be able to do that right now, but you might know somebody who works at some kind of water treatment plant, or you can, you know, look them up and email them and eventually they'll get back to you. You can also investigate endangered marine life. There are tons and tons of resources online that tell you endangered species. Um, I know for Ohio, you can look at the ODNR and look for endangered species on there. Um, and it gives you a list and all the information about them. So definitely look those things up. And then the other way you can find out about water issues is investigate water as a hazard. So maybe look into flash flooding or tsunamis or something like that. But that's totally up to you the way you do that. As long as you complete that step, that is cool. Um, step number four would be exploring water solutions. For that, you need to interview a water scientist to find out how much they're helping you can also explore the world of hydroelectricity um, and then play an engineer. I know nothing about hydroelectricity, so that's something that I might want to look into because I don't know what it is. So it'd be something brand new for me to learn. And then you can also design your own water innovation. I'm not sure what that's going to look like for you. Maybe we'll just make your own, you know, like 
mill with that water wheel and everything and get it to work that way. Or maybe you try something else. It's totally up to you. And then finally, step five is educate and inspire. So I did, like I said at the very beginning, make a video for you as my version of how I educate and inspire people about water. Just by watching this video, you are not completing step five. You have to do something like that on your own. But my video is about um, the Stillwater River, a little bit about the Stillwater River, and then the creek or the little, yeah, I'd call it a creek or runoff that flows into the river and the little critters that I find in there. I'm going to talk a lot about some macroinvertebrates, which are organisms, organisms that live underwater in streams and in rivers. And then I didn't mention this at all in the video, but to find these critters, I used what's called a dip net and, um, or, you know, it has like a D ring shaped net. Um, and it has small holes, so you can get some macroinvertebrates out of the water with that. Um, <clears throat> and mine is telescoping, so if I'm a farther distance away from where I want to be, I can um, make it get longer and get stuff out that way. And then I also found an app in the App Store for free called Creek Critters. Um, and it's, I think... Um, Maybe the Audubon, National Audubon Society put that app out there. So you can use that app to um, find out that information. But again, the app was called Creek mm -hmm. Critters. And you can use that to identify anything that you find in the water if that's the route you decide to go on. But as I said before, you need to complete all of these steps um, to earn your water, your ambassador water badge. Um, we did step one and we talked about step five, um, and that was to have fun reflecting on your relationship with water and educate and inspire. To finish this badge out, make sure you do complete steps one and five that we just talked about, and then do steps three and four independently. You can look back on this video for some suggestions on how to do that. And then once all five steps are completed, you'll be able to purchase that badge from the online shop.